Welcome to week one of the Pentathon. Uh, paperback Junkie, Matt at Paperback Junkie's five-week quest to get us to read some good pulp that he loves. As the cars go by. Um, so yes, I chose um, week one was pick something of Edgar Rice Burroughs. I pe picked because I had it on my shelves and it was the first one in this, well, not the first one in the series, it's Pellucidar, which is the second in the Pellucidar series. Uh, the first one being uh, at the, uh, the, it's the hollow, it's a hollow earth, hollow earth books. Um, the first book apparently uh, was about David Innes and his friend Abner Perry, uh, who invented uh, this iron mole and was able to burrow to the center of the earth, where of course they were just consumed by magma in the end. No, no, this is Edgar Rice Burroughs, who, 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 uh, is the science fantasy um, end of things. He's the Star Wars of his time, and indeed Star Wars probably stole some of his other other ideas from his uh, his uh, John Carter of Mars books. But uh, no, in in this one they 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 tunnel to the center of the Earth, where surprise, it's hollow, and indeed it's hollow. But it's not like all dark in there. There is indeed a fixed, um, almost like little sun in the middle. It doesn't really go into this into it very more in much much detail but basically it's 12 noon everywhere in this world and as you walk around i guess upside down on the inside of this gi this gigantic air area you can look up and it's the, the i guess that's the that's the magma uh blah blah blah, blah. adventure <laughs> so in this book which has a weird framing device because i find books at this time we always have to have a framing device to kind of convince the reader oh this is real versus just go oh no this is fantasy so um the uh the the fellow finds uh, a strange box uh, there a fellow finds a strange box in the sahara uncovers it and it's a t it's a telegraph thing and he 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 writes to the uh fellow who of course i can't remember his name who wrote the first at the at the center of the what the heck are these book what was the other one called Lucidar. and of course i probably don't have any of the names here uh ah at the hollow earth the, the first book um he uh he, he he writes to them saying like well i thought your book was nonsense but i believe you now because i found this thing which i it's a telegraph thing and of course it must go to the center of the earth where david innes is at the other end and over the course of about two months or something like that he relates the story by telegraph of what hap what's what's happened next and indeed what's happened next is i guess david innes was tricked by the the Huja, the sly one, who is, uh, uh, I believe, a human being, uh, to, uh, to, he was, th he thought he was going to, he was, he thought he was taking off with, uh, Dian, his true love, but it turned out, no, it was a, it was a Mayhar female, a reptile, reptile woman. And uh, so he got up to the surface and went, oh crap, I got the wrong person, but I'm not going to kill her or anything like that. I'm just going to go back down into the, back down into the earth where, because, again, science fantasy, Instead of just like, you know, a short amount of time going by, it's like it's been, it's been like, I think it's been years or something like that. Basically, the great empire that he had set up in the first book, because of course he's the great, he's the great white dude. And he, he's, 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 he had, he had unified all this, the cavemen to rebel against the evil Mayhars who are actually kind of more civilized and have, have like a lot more kind of technology and thought and are sort of, I uh, seem to be like communicate by telepathy, but have enslaved the humans. And of course he's got to, he's got to take the side of the humans and we're, we're going to, we're going to get rid of all these Mayhars. It's like, but that's all fallen apart. The great, um, the great federation he had put together of tribes has all fallen apart. And now he's got to find, he's, he's gotten back, he's gotten back into, into the, uh, the, into the hollow earth and he's got to find everyone. He's got to find Abner. He's got to find his great love, uh, uh, Dian, uh, and, uh, Glack, Glarg, or something like that. They all have wonderfully hilarious names. Um, and you know, it's one of these books where it's like, it's, it's here. Let me just do a little bit of the writing. Um, just a little bit of the, uh, a little, just little clips of the, of, of what, how he's written written it like this is him setting free that mayhar reptile woman there are actually all the mayhars are are uh, reptile and they're all fe they're all reptile they're all female they all re reproduce by some kind of interesting interesting thing i won't spoil that for you that that is a plot point apparently in the first book and i'll have to go back and read it now because i will go back and read it, read it now but he sets her free uh and he says at the edge of the sea the creature the mayhar female pat paused and looked back at me then she slid sinuously into the surf. For several minutes, I saw no more of her as she luxuriated in the cool depths. 
Then a hundred yards from shore she rose, and then for another short while she floated upon the surface. Finally she spread her giant wings, flapped them vigorously a score of times, and rose above the blue sea. A single time she circled far aloft, and then straight as an arrow she sped away. I watched her until the distant haze enveloped her, and she had disappeared. I was alone. So it's like I, they, they, he does, it, Burroughs will pause every once in a while, and it's super adventure writing to have like kind of these very kind of atmospheric scenes, though, you know, they're small, they're small books. I know he wrote by the word, but he was also, pub this was first published in 1915 in a magazine, and they seem to kind of really hurry by what you would think is like all the kind of, the, a lot of descriptive things. You don't get a real clear sense of what people look like, or just, you know, they use words to kind of let the, the reader fill in because like, you know, you have here on the front, I believe that's, that's, uh, supposed to be, uh, Dina, 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 um, you know, getting, uh, threatened by the, the saber tooth, sa horrible saber tooth tiger. And there's a paradact pterodactyl coming to swoop in. And it's like, you know, she's hardly wearing anything. Like this is Frank, F Frank Frazetta's, uh, very fleshy, uh, fleshy rendition of what he thinks that she looks like. But you uh, you see kind of um, um, illustrations of the time of like the, uh, of 1915, I believe, like what was maybe on the front of the magazine. And it's like, you know, she's wearing full, full cleft, full, full clothed uh, um, uh, uh, tiger robe here. And it's like, it's almost like quite chaste, but maybe for the time it was considered risque. And while this is like, ah, oh, now that's hot risque for like, whatever, this is like the sixties, you know? So uh, there's a lot of just letting, letting you fill in, fill in the, what the, um, fill in what the uh, readers think, um, what the re readers, readers see. So, you know, as however perverted or however uh, imaginative you are, you want to project as maybe a, you know, horny dude or whatever you can see oh but it's actually a rather chaste book in that way of like you know it's one of these 1915 books like oh and then we we made we made love briefly but we had to hurry because we were being pursued pursued by things so it's like you know there's not a lot of like ha 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 let's get hubba hubba with things no this is a boy's adventure we don't want to get all that kissy kissy stuff um but yeah but it, it's also got like just wonderful uh, vigorous things where, uh, there's a thing here where they're kind of going across what I, it's like a fog bound thing. And, um, poor Abner, uh, who's, uh, he's, 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 he's the tech guy you want to along in all these adventures because he's the inventor. He's the one who, who, who reinvents, you know, cannons and, and explosives and, and all sorts of murderous weapons for then David to use to, uh, build his empire. But, uh, in, in this scene, it's very, start at the beginning of the book he he falls off a cliff and he's like oh my god that's the last i'm ever going to see of him and uh spoiler um, you, you, you see you see him again in a couple of pages so i don't think that's much of a spoiler but uh here it's like here's an, just an, another passage which i think really give, gives you kind of that kind of that flavor of burrows it's like so he's walking along this fog fog covered fog covered thing it's like i oh, you know death at every at death at, at one edge or the other and it's like but the instinct of self-preservation is stronger than hope. It thrives, fortunately, upon nothing. It takes root upon the brink of the grave and blossoms in the jaws of death. Now it flourishes bravely upon the breast of dead hope and urge me onwards and upwards in a stern endeavor to justify its existence. You know, it's like, <laughs> this is, this is rip roar and ah, in the jaws of death and stuff like that. Um, it is also, you know, it's a book of its, its fantasy of its time because you definitely have this thing of, oh, the Mayhars, they're the other. Uh, and um, the ultimate kind of, I'm, you know, I, I always think about this being kind of like, you know, how far away is this from like the Indian, the Indian Wars after uh, the Civil War and uh, the Tale of Tr Tale of Tears, where, you know, we had, where North Americans in general had a very much kind of a thing of, ex, you know, extinguishing, uh, other cultures that were, that were here, that were here bef before us, the native, the native things. And, you know, Mayhart, the, 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 the assumption here is that, well, the Mayhards, there can only be one dominant race in the, in the hollow earth. And it, and, you know, it's either going to be the Mayhards or it's going to be the humans. And that, you know, the ultimate gain, gain uh, the ultimate aim of David Innes, our hero, is to exterminate all the Mayhars, to, to wipe them, to wipe them out, to, to, uh, boost up the, uh, Stone Age humans to such, you know, 
have such violence that they can wipe out the things. And at which point, at which point, once we've killed everybody else, then we're going to, then his, his plan is to establish a sort of a utopic thing where there's hardly any government and there's not going to be any money because that's, you know, it's another root of all evil. So it's, it's an interesting expression of, of, uh, what you could see as the, as the biases and the, political leanings and hopes of this particular author and, and sort of of its time of of like ah oh, adventure where there's not gonna be too much government we're gonna kill the other and um i have to i bet you know it's like at the same time i really enjoy i really enjoy reading this while at the same time it's like it's it's interesting to look at this um I, you know, I, I don't know if like, you know, uh, uh, there was a thing of Steve Donahue talking about oh, how, you know, uh, pulp, you know, silly that pulp, pulp writers like H.P. Lovecraft want to be taken seriously and studied and studied in schools. And it's like, they're interesting as at least Edgar Rice Burroughs, like, okay, it's not great literature. It's great, great adventure stuff, but it's also kind of fun to fun or interesting or valuable to look at it as, ah, this is this is kind of an expression of kind of some inner core stuff just by how casually it's like, yes, we're going to wipe out all the Mayhars, even though they're actually, they're probably actually the more civilized and cultural cultured group here. And, and uh, yeah, so, but we're going to, they're the other. So we're going to, we're going to kill them all. Also interesting that they're all female, which, you know, <laughs> that's another, that's another topic. So there's all these wonderful topics and I, I'm totally going to pick up uh, some of the, uh, I'm going to pick up the earlier book, which, freaking name I can't. I've also got, uh, I think I've got Savage uh, Pellucidar somewhere around as well. So yes, thanks. Thanks, Matt, for uh, giving me a poke to actually uh, grab this. It's making a wonderful offset to all the, uh, all the Shakespeare, all the Shakespeare, which I'm also enjoying, but in a different, different kind of level, but uh, no less. Uh, hey, Titus Andron and Andronicus, uh, also good and bloody and violent and problematic, I'm sure as well. So uh, with all those just women, you just want to talk about misogyny in, in books. Okay, so <laughs> we can have a competition. Uh, all right. Pellucidar. Arr. Oh, and Gur Gur Gur. Gur 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 is in this book. And, uh, oh, every time, every time I would read Gur Gur Gur, I would just, I would, I would think of Steve Donahue, uh, chuckling over that because I believe he, he talked about these books earlier in one of his videos. And it, it's just, uh, it's a delight. It's a delight. All right. More videos later.